videos out there describing what's called personal carry or everyday carry. Uh, it started off as one of those tactical mall ninja gun blogs, but a lot of DIYers, including people like Ben Hack and Adam Savage, have been doing it to show off what they normally carry for their everyday use, be it a small little work bag or just the personal items they carry on their own. They've shown what they use on an everyday basis. So I figured it would be a great opportunity to show you as an audio engineer and a stage manager and a festival director and somebody who pretty much works for theater, what I carry every day. Yes, it's a man bag or a man purse or whatever. I call it a tool bag. Now, one of the first pieces I carry in this bag is actually not in the bag at the moment. It is this, a Tascam DR5 personal field recorder. Uh, the reason it's not in the bag right now is because, well, I'm using it to record this video itself. Uh, what this is, is a linear field recorder. It has two condenser mics on the outside in a AV configuration, which means one is pointed to stage left and one is pointed towards stage right. It is um, battery powered, or you can get an AC adapter for it. And it's a digital recorder that records in either MP3 or WAV file. And it's pretty self-explanatory. It's a two-track stereo recorder. Uh, it's got basic editing buttons on the front. You can arm it, load it, set it to record, and it takes micro SD card, or you can upload it just straight through the USB. And the uh, nice part about this is that it also has, if we look on the front here, an extension input. That means I can take a two-track mix down off of the console, plug it in here, use I'd say aux sends, for example, and create a simple stereo balance mix. I can monitor it through this line out that allows me to monitor with a set of headphones, and we're good to go. Um, I keep this in my bag all the time simply because it's a great little piece of kit for somebody who wants to record a show but didn't have to bring an interface or a DAW of any kind to record into it. it it's always good just to have a recorder around just in case. And that actually lives in one of the pockets in here. It's become a very invaluable piece of kit, especially for my worship house consults where I go and I do some consultation for live sound for worship houses and churches. Uh, it's a great way to get a simple recording. And for most churches, a little device like that is all they need to record their services. It's pretty cool. And it runs about 75 to $120. Uh, there's several different manufacturers. Taxcam is one I prefer. Uh, but Zoom makes a really popular one. I believe the uh, H1 is one of the more popular ones. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that. Um, Korg makes one, and uh, Alesis makes several. I mean, it's a very common device. They make them everything from a simple little two-track to eight-track units. But by that point, you're kind of exceeding just quick and easy and simple. That cost me about $79 on Amazon, and it's one of the best purchases I have made. Anyway, going into the bag. Into the bag itself proper, we have at first an Amazon Kindle. I know, it's not audio gear, so why do I have it? Well, it's a great way to hold technical information, books, um, tech manuals, notes. I use it for everything. Uh, for example, you'll see on here, if you could read it, aside from some other just simple books, uh, if it's even showing up on screen, I have. Uh, your basic text, like such as modern recording techniques, the live sound manual, and, and I'll cover over those, some of those books in a later video, why they're must-haves for an audio engineer. Uh, another good example is just right here. I've got a PDF of the standard life plot for the menu I work at at, uh, at the university. So, I mean, it's a great little piece of kit, and it's also nice because it's inexpensive. This is the Kindle standard version. It's not the paper white or anything. It cost me $79, brand new not counting the fancy schmancy case. And it runs for well over a month on a charge, so I can charge it, throw it in my gear bag, forget about it. It's super light, very durable, and it doesn't have a backlight, which means that I could use it at the console during a show, and it's not distracting. Again, this is great simply because it's information. Information is always king. You always want to have all your tech manuals on you. You want to have your technical writers for shows on you. You want to have reference manuals. 
even if it's just for tech use, very much worth the money to buy a Kindle, put it in the bag, and keep it for backups. And these hold, this one holds like two gigs of information, I believe, which is thousands upon thousands of tech writers and hundreds of books, so can't go wrong with one of those. Going back into the bag, next is gaff tape. If you don't know what gaff tape is, you must get it. It is like duct tape because it is a cloth-backed tape. But instead of duct tape, which uses a natural rubber adhesive, gaff tape uses a synthetic adhesive. But it's not only extremely heat resistant, but it can be stuck to things and taken off and then restuck to things and not lose its adhesion. It's very easy to cut, very easy to tear, and if you stick it upon itself, it's not coming off. So, great material to have. It's also very expensive in comparison to duct tape. Uh, one roll of gaff tape will run you, good quality gaff tape, will run you about 13 to $25. Gaff tape's just expensive because it does so much and you really can't go without it. So, gaff tape in the bag, always important. Let's see, are we still in print? Yeah. Next is, oh, aside from that, this. This is simply board tape. Board tape allows me to write on an audio console, and it's just pen friendly. You just take a Sharpie, write on it, and you would put this on the control strip of your audio console. That way, you always know what's labeled. And when you have to switch over bands, just tear it off and put it back on. It's better than the masking tape that everybody uses because it's white. You can actually see it clearly. And unlike masking tape, it doesn't leave a residue gooey stuff on your board if you forget to take it off. So, board tape, always important. Let's see what next here is a rigging knife. Now, this is just a standard fixed blade, non serrated rigging knife. This is just a like Gerber. I bought it at. Wally World for about $20. Uh, you'll find them in the camping and hunting section. And it's just a fixed blade knife. Um, make sure it's not serrated. It's called a drop point or a smooth edge knife. Not only is it just good to have a general knife around, in a lot of union houses, the union rules say you have to have a rigging knife if you're going up in the grid in a rig. Most audio engineers don't have to deal with that. I work at a theater, it's a little different, but always good to have around. Let's see, what else do I have? Ah! Gloves. Gloves are pretty self-explanatory. You all gear, you need gloves. Uh, just good Kevlar leather things. I bought these at Home Depot, $13. Good to have. All right, next. Multi-tool Leatherman-like device. Uh, this is a Gerber suspension. This is very cheap. This is $26, I believe, at Target. Um, honestly, I'm not terribly thrilled with this one, but it's mainly because I can't find my Leatherman. So, anyway, it's got all the basic needs of scissors, knives, screwdrivers, all that in there. And again, if you're working at a union house, you need a Leatherman. And this applies to all stagehands, all audio engineers, everybody. So, it's just really good to have. You can have a good quality ones that are made by Leatherman, by Gerber, um, SOG, um, or SOG, I don't know how you pronounce it. They uh, apparently make some really good ones too. Um, yeah, just get one. Can't go wrong. Next, flashlight. Not just any flashlight. Again, since I come from the world of union theater production, uh, mag light is where it's at. And uh, yeah, it's this one is the LED version. It's very sharp, very bright. Even with all the lights going on, you can still see it. Um, double A. This one cost me thirteen dollars. Uh, so just get any good LED flashlight that will last you, and that is very durable, and this is it's a mag light. It'll last forever. Let's see. Next in here we have... Uh, bag's a little messy. I had a gig. It was a bit of a rush. We have pens, but not just any pens. Good gel pens in black or blue because certain contracts, believe it or not, <laughs> require you to write in black or blue ink. And if I'm signing a manifest or a shipping receiving letter or something like that, I want to make sure I have one of each. And of course, Sharpies. Fine point and medium point. Medium point, fine point. Writing on board tape, marking things. 
writing on CDs if you have clients that still use CDs on a live gig. Good stuff. All right, next. Bag of foam earplugs. Now, these are my earplugs, but I always keep a bag of these. These are just the Howard Lee, uh, or Howard Light, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, just these little foam earplugs. I believe these are a negative 24 dB. Uh, yeah, just little throwaway earplugs, because I can guarantee you people who are helping you with the gig always forget their earplugs, and they're complaining. And if they're not complaining, they should. And if you forget your, ear, your good earplugs, you should always have a couple of these on hand. Again, really cheap. You can buy a whole carton of those that have like 250, 300 earplugs for like 30 bucks. Next, crescent wrench. Now this doesn't apply to most people, but you should have it in there anyway. These are really cheap. Harbor Freight, like $2, uh, or any Maynard's, uh, for those of you on the Midwest, uh, or, or Sears, for those of you who still happen to live around Sears. Uh, they're just, it's got a little lanyard, so I just don't lose it. And uh, it's not only good for lighting, which is predominantly why I have it, but it's good for anything that needs simple repair. It doesn't take up much room in the tool bag. Worth having. And we're getting to the bottom of the main compartment here. This is just the uh, RCA combo jack for my field recorder. And on this one, it's simply tangled up, which is bad. It's got stereo RCA, not proper colors, I know, but it just happens to be the one I carried. And an eighth inch TRS jack. This is simply so I can plug my Tascam into an audio console anywhere I'm at if somebody wants a quick recording. All right, getting down to the bottom of it, if we go onto the side here, we have, I'll get to that in a minute, we have a USB to Edison charger. It's got a little USB port on the side here. It's got the standard wall plug. This goes with the USB charging cable. That fits my task cam. That also fits my phone. It's just a great way to charge something. So invest the money, get one of these little USB charge dealies. That way, all your electronics, your Kindle, your recorder, your phone. Because the worst thing you can do is be on a gig and something dies. Next is probably the most important piece of kit. And what these are, are earplugs. Um, now, there are plenty of high-end earplugs you can get. You can go to an ENT or ear, nose, and throat specialist and get some custom-made filtering earplugs. Now, those will cost you anywhere from $200 to $1,000. They have passive and active ones would actually use a microprocessor to determine what frequencies are the loudest and attenuate them for you. And some of them have fancy filters and all that. These are passive earplugs. These are made by Surefire. These are the EP4s. Now, how these work is kind of interesting. I'll go ahead and bring this closer to the camera, hopefully you can see it. What this is, is a silicone earplug. And what it does, it, it baffles the sound. It's got small little baffles. So the sound comes in through here. Any sound generally under around 85 dB is going to be attenuated very little. But once it gets above that, the baffles actually break up the sound. Because remember, energy cannot be removed or canceled. Energy can only be transferred from one state of form to the other. And in this case, the baffles actually cause resistance turning that energy of sound waves, which is molecules of air ramming into one another, causing a chain reaction, and it generates heat instead. And that slows down the sound, or the airwaves, going into the earplug, and lowers the volume. Uh, these have two functions. Uh, the first one is the passive noise gate, like we said, that has the baffles on the inside, that when it gets to a certain volume, it actually breaks up that SPL, and brings it down on a certain level. Or they've got these little flappy little plugs here. I don't know if you can see up the light. I get better light. And you just plug those in, and that will just automatically bring the whole thing down by 30 dB. Uh, these, these run about $15. These are infinitely better than the foam earplugs. Now, the active earplugs are better than these. But the problem I have with the active earplugs, aside from being expensive, although they work really well, is that they filter out certain frequencies. I just need to bring down the SPL of the room overall, because I need to hear as many frequencies as possible. There are better earplugs out there, but for the money, this is great. If you're looking for an inexpensive, but 
quality way to get protection for your ears and something to save up for until you can get the cash for the really nice active unit. Again, these are made by Surefire, which is a firearms uh, supply company, but they make a lot of really good hearing protection and uh, can't go wrong. And I believe, if I double check my other pocket, that that is it. Oh, no, no, no. We have one more thing. Drum key. Always carry a drum key. Until they make a Leatherman with a drum key in it, this is invaluable. Really nice, really useful. Anyway, as you can see, that is my daily carry. Oh, aside from my wallet and, of course, a phone. Anyway, this is Jared from The Pirate of Life, showing you what my daily carry as an audio engineer and technical director is in my man bag. I mean, tool bag.